Hey guys, Tom here with yet another Isotope RX Advanced tutorial video. Uh, this one's going to be about mouth clicks. So if, if you've worked with any kind of human voice project, uh, whether it's podcast or video or film or even hip hop song, you're going to come across mouth clicks. It's just part of the human voice. There's good clicks and there's bad clicks and there's multiple ways to deal with, with uh, the bad clicks, the good clicks you want to leave alone. And learning to differentiate between those takes some practice. But basically, the good clicks are going to be your P's, your B's, your consonant sounds that you need in order to have clarity in the voice. And the bad clicks are going to be the mistakes. The spit clicks and the lip smacks and denture clicks is another one you'll come across uh, if you're working with older actors. So Isotope is super powerful. It's also very misused when it comes to mouth clicks. I've heard it misused even on big budget projects where for whatever reason, people just, they tend to over process stuff. So we're gonna go through not over processing, but I'll show you what it will sound like when you do. Let's start with our raw audio file. I'll play it for you. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Obviously a beautiful, beautiful poetry reading. Uh, tons of clicks. I did some intentional ones at the head of the file, some lip smacks. Little three piece there. And then there's also unintentional ones that just happen while you're talking. Here's a good example. Uh, there's also some consonants and we're going to... What First, I'll show you what a lot of people do. They get isotope. They, they see all these tools and they say, oh yeah, time to go to town. Let me bust out my D clicker. Bam, those clicks are all gone. We're done with that. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Oh, oh, what happened? It took away all the good stuff. I'm gonna hit undo so you can see what it took away. It took away this CK sound on quick. The quick brown, it took away the G sound on dog. Let me hit redo so you can hear that. Okay. Ah, that one's not too bad. But it took away a lot of good stuff, a lot of consonants. Uh, and you need those for clarity. There's a there's a battle going on right now with people saying they can't understand what the actors are saying. And I agree with them. I don't like having subtitles on a show where I'm trying to understand what people are saying. If it's not in my language, sure. But if it's English, I shouldn't have to have subtitles on and dynamic range compression just to get the story points. So anything I can do as a dialogue editor to keep that from happening, keeping the clarity of people's voices, keeping their consonants punchy and, and able to cut through whatever else is going on in the mix, very important. I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. So don't use D-click that way. Don't just highlight everything and D-click it. Don't batch process with it. Then people will say, okay, well, hey, Tom, what about mouth D-click? Pretty transparent, right? It's better. Let's listen to it. Okay. So it didn't get those. It didn't get that. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. It did clean up a lot. Yeah, it's definitely better. It left some stuff behind. Uh, let me undo. You can see it shaved off a little bit of this CK sound. The high frequencies especially. And, and I could mess with the settings and try to get it to where it doesn't. But then it's going to leave other stuff behind. The other bad thing that this uh, will do, let's see if I can find a good example. Uh, this is an okay example, I guess. There's certain types of voices. Here's a good one, where it's a it's a square it's a square or a sawtooth wave, and the edges of the the uh, one cycle of the waveform is like a hard edge and it creates these ticks. They're, they're a series of ticks, but it's the person's voice. It's not like a recording or it's it's not an error in the recording, I should say. Over. The so over. Over. The right? Nothing wrong with that. And if I hit mouth click, let's see what it does. It took away some of these oscillations. And this is the type of thing that you won't hear it like the first 500 times you do it. And then you'll you'll hear it after you know you do something for a long time and you'll say, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, it doesn't sound very good. And I'm guilty as charged. I used to process stuff with mouth to click all the time, but I got to where I could hear it. I I heard it being overused. I started hearing it in my own work. 
And I thought, you know, this is just, it's not worth it. It does get rid of a lot of clicks, but it takes something out that I want to keep in. It takes that edge to the dialogue, that clarity, the crispness, whatever you want to call it. And it's just not, it's not what I want to be known for. So I'm going to hit undo or back to the raw audio file. Those are the two kind of like common mistakes people make. They use de-click, which is a big no-no, and they use mouth de-click, which is a little no-no. Um, but I understand, you know, you don't always have a full uh, six days to do a 42-minute episode dialogue ep uh, cut on a TV show. So you got to do what you got to do. To that point, if you're confronted with something that's this nasty and you need to get a bunch of clicks out quickly without going piece by piece, reach for decrackle. Decrackle seems to me to do a much more transparent job. It doesn't cut into the square or sawtooth wave type of voice. Uh, and it does tend to take away a lot of these high frequencies, na high frequency nasties like this guy right here. I'll show you what this does. Very conservative settings, quality on high, strength on 2.5, amplitude at minus 10. I'm going to hit render. And you can see it's, it's taken away a lot of the nasties and it has not has not cut into I just hit undo I'm gonna hit redo hasn't cut into this stuff at all so undo ticks mostly gone this is a great tool for just kind of smoothing over really clicky stuff you will have to go back and you know take care of these monsters and some of the other stuff but I would say it takes away like 70 60 to 70 percent of the nasties and on a show where I don't have as much time as I'd like, or it's really, really clicky, I will use Decrackle on a lot of the clips. It's really nice on lav mics too, because, well, that's more mechanical clothing noise, but it just, it gets the fuzz out of that stuff. Uh, for mouth clicks, it's also totally underused, um, and it's a great tool for that. I'm going to hit undo, so we're back to the raw audio one more time. And let's get a sip of coffee here, because this next part, you, you guys are really in for it. It's going to take a while. Coffee's empty. Not a good spot to be in as a dialogue editor. Uh, just run on pure coffee and rage. So the better way to deal with clicks is the careful, correct, technically good way, which is going one by one and taking each one out by hand. On a feature film or a high-budget union show, TV show, where you get plenty of time to do a dialogue edit, it's great. Can't beat it. You're never going to hear the work. It's going to be totally transparent. Uh, but it does take a while. There's a couple different ways to get rid of clicks. Uh, first, let me show you the, the secret to this. Go to Isotope RX10, go to Preferences, go to Keyboard, and we're going to set some keyboard shortcuts with my most used uh, declicking tools. Declick, the one I told you, don't use that. Apply declick, you can see that's set to number one. That is my most used tool, but I use it in a slightly different way. Decrackle, I already showed you that. Oops, if I could spell. I, I promise it's just coffee in that cup. Uh, that is set to 2 for me. So I hit 2, decrackle. Then let's look at spectral repair. Uh, it doesn't show up. One but downside with these keyboard shortcuts is they tend to use like the software name for them. So you kind of have to worry about spacing. Okay, spectral repair attenuate is set to 3. I have replace set to 4. Uh, what else do I have that I use a lot? Ambience match. Again, spelling, not a strong suit of mine. Train. This is where you tell the ambience match, hey, look here, learn this. I want to use this type of ambience. I have that set to seven. And then the render for that, which they just call match ambience for whatever reason, is eight. So I have uh, one, two, three, four, and then I have seven and eight, five, six, and then I have a bunch of other presets are for other issues that I come across, so don't worry about that right now. Just talking about clicks. So I'm going to hit OK, keep those. Hopefully I don't mess them up. And let's start. There was a mouth click right there. You hear that? I'm going to start with these lip smacks. The quick brown. So one easy way to do this, you don't even need isotope for this, is just highlight some tone and paste it over the top. Downside, you're going to create a little mini loop. If there's nothing bad happening, it's generally okay, but you can see I'm actually pasting clicks in there. I don't want to do that. So let me undo that. But this is a pretty good tone sample. So I'm going to hit 7 and learn it. If you want to do it the slow way, which will take you forever to get through a clip, you can hit learn 
and then I'm going to highlight the nasties. I want to keep that breath. So I'm just going to do these clicks and I'm going to hit eight or you could hit render. Let's do render on this one. I'm going to go turtle mode. Okay. And now those clicks should be gone. The quick. So this one, this big lip smack, I'm not touching that. I'm just getting these ones out right here. Okay. So I'm going to hit, I just hit undo and now I hit redo. The quick so they're gone. I left the breath in there. There's still these nasties that I need to deal with that I need to deal with, pardon me. But that's the the easiest way is just to fill it in with with tone. You could do fill paste, uh, you know, copy. If you have a long sample of tone, you can just do copy and paste just like any other audio editor too. Uh, and you're just pasting over the noise saying I'm not even going to deal with removing that. I'm just going to copy over it with something that sounds good. Now, declick, which is my go-to tool for this i set it to multi-band random and i set the sensitivity up around uh it's usually pretty high it's usually around four click widening to grab more clicks and then depending on where the clicks are in the frequency spectrum i'll deal with this otherwise i just leave it in the middle but the nice thing about this tool is let's deal with before the lips i want to keep this lip smack i want to keep that but I want to get rid of these. I want to get rid of these pre-clicks. It's going to be tough for you to hear them, but they're there. So if I highlight this, just the stuff I want to remove and hit one, you can see they're mostly gone. Again, if you don't have, have uh, keyboard shortcuts, you could just hit render. Same deal there. I can do that. And now it should be dramatically cleaned up. The qu Still some remnants there. So this is where I'll start combining methods. Copy and fill paste shift option v the quick brown frock. pretty clean i still have this one i'm going to highlight and hit one declick the quick the quick brown pretty clean the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog there's a, a pretty big tick on the end of dog here there's this one too but the ones that are happening simultaneously with spoken word you know that's like that's the worst so that's gone i just highlighted that and hit one declick uh if i don't if i'm hearing the remnant that's left behind Doug. then i'll do spectral repair attenuate Doug. and there's these up here i'll highlight these hit one that didn't work sometimes decrackle will get them better and then again combining methods copy paste copy paste I'll go ahead and just copy paste over this one. That's a super easy one. Okay. The quick brown fox jumped over. This one, let's take this lip smack out. We'll leave the first lip smack in and we'll take this one out. Uh, let's do, yeah, we'll just do copy and paste. I want to leave this breath in. I left this stuff down here. I need to copy and paste over that. Okay, we've got these three in a row. I'm going to hit one. They're gone. We got one here. I'm going to hit one. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. So I can I can show you taking out all the clicks if you guys wanted, but it's, you know, that could take five or ten minutes. So I'm just going to do a couple more here and call it good. The lazy dog. And you can see the nice thing about doing it this way is it, it tends to be more transparent. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. There's actually a low click on this one. I think it's this one right here. And so this, what I'll need to do is go to declick and lower the frequency skew. And it got rid of it. Dog. Yeah, that's better. Dog. But see, I left the G in there. That G sound is very important. Lazy dog. See what happens if I take this one out too. Dog. Okay, nice. That's pretty clean. Dog. The lazy dog. Dog. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. I'll leave that one. That was a terrible, I don't know why I did that. But, you know, actually, I don't like that. That doesn't sound good. Listen to this dog. The dog. Natural. American. The lazy dog. What the heck is that? So another cool thing about Isotope is just using it as a as a audio editor. I replaced the G. Let me move it back a tiny bit more. 
I replaced that G with a good G. Lazy dog. Perfect. It's the same G, but is anybody going to notice? Maybe me and maybe the mixer, and that's about it. So let me play this from the top. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. There's one more in between jumped. Jumped over the fox, jumped over the fox, jumped over the fox, jumped over the I'm going to take this particular click out. Screw you, click. You're out of there. Oh, that was too much. I did a little spectral repair afterwards. Tried to sneak that by you guys. Uh, spectral repair tends to work better if you have a smaller selection. So you can even break stuff down into bands. Fox jumped over the lazy... And there's uh, one here. Click here. I did one for that to de-click. Over the... Over the... There's still something up there. Over the... Over the... Yeah, I'm not sure. Let's see. It's got to be this guy, right? Let me do spectral repair and get that guy out. over the lazy. Nope, it's still over there. the. It must be this. It must be that one. You can actually some of these clicks you can grab them with spectral repair inside the audio, and if the selection is short enough, it'll just repair based on what's around it. Over the lazy dog. So I reopened the original file because I forgot to have two copies of it. My bad. Uh, and we're gonna compare before and after. So here's the. Here's the original raw audio. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Here's the cleaned up manually version. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Let me mouth de-click this and we'll just repair, we'll compare these two with a default mouth de-click setting and see which one sounds better. So this is going to be no longer raw audio. This is processed with mouth de-click and then we'll have this one, the mouth clicks.wave is going to be our manually cleaned up one. So here is the uh, bulk process mouth de-click. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. And then here's our manually cleaned up one. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. So to me, it's it's no contest. The manually cleaned up one sounds better. It did take me longer than five seconds to do, but the end result is totally worth the effort if you're working on uh, critical projects or something where the sound quality is very important. If you're just doing run and gun stuff, you know, maybe reality TV or something where you're just kind of cranking stuff out, by all means, do batch processing. I've been there. I will be there again. I've had to do it. It's it's not fun, but, you know, you got to pay the bills. So it's okay to do that. But when you get to slow down, and do something where the quality really matters. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and get in there with uh, these tools, D-Click, Spectral Repair, to tastefully and specifically and strategically deal with mouth clicks instead of just treating them as something to be discarded. Because as I showed you, there's good clicks in the human voice that you want to keep. And throwing them all out with just a blanket process to me, it does a disservice to the dialogue, and it's not a hallmark of being a good dialogue editor. So, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I, I tried to kind of get through stuff quickly, but I know it's a lot to listen to, and I'll try to make more as time uh, time permits. Uh, I'm kind of on a break now, so I'll probably get one a week for a little bit. Uh, and as always, leave a comment below if you have any questions. I know I flew through the uh, keyboard presets pretty quick, and I was just flying through stuff, but... The point of that is just that you can get really fast and efficient, even doing stuff manually, provided you have your keyboard shortcut set up to allow you to do that. So you're not always having to click over here or click to a second monitor on the other side or use a stream deck and, you know, fumble with switches and stuff. It's right there under your left hand. Your right hand does the mouse. Uh, it can be super quick to get through and clean up even very difficult sounds with those. And I'm going to be using those shortcuts on every video. So uh, I'll probably touch base a little bit more on those later. 
But I think that's it for this video. Again, thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time.